Good morning, everyone. I wanted to film another little video because I'm realizing that a lot of our new members have some of the same questions, which makes sense because um, there's some pretty popular questions out there that I certainly had when I got started. And so I thought I would film a short video just answering some of our frequently asked questions and hope it is helpful. I'm trying a new filming platform, Screencastify, and I'm hoping um, it'll be okay. So the first question, probably get it a couple times a day. Yes, this book is for math. No, there's not an ELA book yet. Yes, it's okay. I 100% understand the trepidation. I was the same way. But let me tell you, this book is not about content. There's nothing really in here on how to teach math. It is all how to get students thinking and not mimicking the teacher in a nutshell. So whether you teach math or art or whatever, if you want your kids to think, this book will help you. Now, why isn't there an ELA book yet? I don't know, but I have my speculation. So Peter spent almost 20 years researching these practices, and he was in hundreds of classrooms throughout the world. Math. He's probably working on that for ELA would be my thought, but that's going to take a long time because he's not just throwing stuff out there to suggest. He's only suggesting things that are evidence-based through his real critical thorough research. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much is he does not just say, oh, kids need to be at vertical boards without giving all of the reasons and all of the things he tried before putting them at the vertical boards. And he has so much evidence, um, like detailed each thing, what um, outcome it had, what practice had the biggest outcome. So he's very thorough. So my thinking is the reason why he hasn't put out an ELA book yet is because he really wants to make sure that is as thorough as well. In my head, though, teaching is teaching. And yeah, there are areas where this probably won't apply for ELA, but like overall, the pedagogy is solid and it can transfer. So yes, it says math. Yes, that's okay. Okay, the other question I get a lot is how to get started. So last year, I only did the first toolkit. If you turn to chapter 15, which I really recommend starting with chapter 15, because it outlines the whole framework and you can get a, the forest before the trees, um, because it can be very confusing at first. If you're like, where is this going? I don't even understand this. Chapter 15 gives you the big picture. On, in chapter 15, you will see on page 281, the toolkits, they're in circles. I wrote this last year, start here. Last year was my first year with building thinking classrooms. And these are the things I did. I did the vertical boards. I did the randomized grouping. I did the thinking tasks. And I did the um, like defronting the classroom. That's about it. And I also only did it for warm ups. So my students only were at the boards from five to 10 minutes every day. That's it. So my plan this year is to obviously go into the next toolkit. I really want to get them at the boards working through thin slicing. So how do you thin slice an ELA task? I want to really check myself on only answering questions that continue the thinking, not answering questions that stop the thinking. I really want to get good at this mobilizing the knowledge, meaning allowing groups to share the knowledge with each other so the answers, the instructions come from other groups, not from me. Um, Oh, and then, yeah, like the flow, like getting kids into the flow, which I'm still obviously learning about. So I say all that to say, if you're new, you do not need to do all 15 at once. In fact, Peter does not suggest that. He suggests get the first few things down 
and then worry about the rest. Um, there are a few things that you have to implement at one time. So read chapter 15, he'll talk about that. You know, and do it every day. So don't just think, well, I'll do thinking classrooms on Monday. He, the research shows that's not enough to disrupt the system. So he talks a lot about students in K-12 education walk into a classroom. They know that they're going to sit down. They're going to watch the teacher. They're going to copy some stuff down. They're probably just going to mimic. And then the bell will ring and they'll go to the next class. And they've been doing that for 10 years, 12 years, however old they are. So you got to disrupt that. If you only do it one day a week, it's not enough to disrupt. But if you're feeling overwhelmed, my suggestion, and I've heard it in the group, do it every day, but for one class. So maybe you have a ninth grade ELA class, you're doing BTC with them every day, all day. And then your other classes, you're going to stick with what you're comfortable with and then maybe, you know, implement later next year. So second question, where do I get started? Chapter 15. Now, the third most common question is, I'm having a hard time visualizing what all of this looks like. Totally understand. I cannot wait to get back to school and really start filming more. But if you go into the Facebook page and you go under Featured, which is right here at the top, and you click Featured, you're going to see, where is it? Featured. I hope my video is working. I guess this is here. Maybe my screen looks a little different than yours. Um, but anyways, if you click this featured tab, you're gonna see some videos that I filmed and that will uh, really help you, I guess, understand a little bit about what I did. So I have some videos here, um, another video here, and another video here. So these videos are really, I think, helpful for folks to just hear me talk out loud about how I ran my building thinking classrooms last year. So again, that is under featured. The other thing that's under featured, if I can find it, I stole it from the actual building thinking classroom page, which is the, the spreadsheet about, um, is it this right here? Yeah. Okay. So when you go into featured, click the one that says um, BTC video podcast webinars. It's a Google Doc. It'll open up this spreadsheet and it is chocked full of stuff. Um, so explore all the tabs at the bottom. Use this web, sh this um, Excel sheet to really just go nuts because you could get lost in all of that. Speaking about building thinking classrooms the normal website, the normal Facebook page, I highly suggest if you aren't already to go into the main page. So we have almost a thousand, 11,000 members, which is so cool. But the main page has 63 and a half thousand members. So this is really for um, math folks, but I guarantee you there's a lot of um, other content teachers in this page too. So I highly recommend joining the regular Building Thinking Classroom page as well. Okay, a few more things. Um, if you're not feeling the book and you're, you know, it's expensive, I get it. It's like 35 bucks on Amazon, which is so bizarre to me because, uh, you know, books are never that much. But, um, or maybe you're just crunched for time. I, this is how I got started. I literally was listening to Cult of Pedagogy. Shout out to uh, Jennifer. I love her podcast. And I just was listening one day and she had an interview with this Peter with a last name I cannot pronounce. And he was being interviewed about his building thinking classroom. And I just was listening. I had no intention of, of doing it. But by the end of this, um, you know, hour long episode, I was hooked. So if you're someone who's really just wants to get uh, a quick, easy, what the heck is this? I highly recommend checking out the episode. So again, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen, Cult of Pedagogy, and then you can search for the episode or just go to this website. Um, I will link this in the comments. Okay, where do you get the book? Amazon, like I said, again, it's expensive. I don't know why. 
not even with Prime Day did it go down. So that's weird. Someone did say they got it for $10 cheaper on a Walmart website. So I don't know. All right. Last thing is I wanted to show um, my way of randomized grouping. So um, when you watch the video um, in the featured tab where I talk about how I get started, which is... Um, Oh, I'm in the wrong Facebook page. But um, the, the video where I talk about, okay, how does this work? The moment the bell rings, what are the kids doing and what is the teacher doing? And so that is right here. And in there, I talk about Class Dojo uh, because I think one of the most common, one of the more common questions is how do you get your kids into groups? I'm a bell to bell teacher. So for me, this works for me because I want the groups already posted when the bell rings. I know that Peter talks about they need to see it being randomized and I completely understand that. But for me, my comfort is like, I need them to know when they walk in the room, where do they put their stuff? What board do they go to? And they need to get started. I hate having downtime, it makes me anxious. So what I do is I have my desks numbered in groups one through six. So I have three, 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 Yes, I only have 18 kids. I know I'm, I'm so fortunate. I'm so grateful. Um, so I have six groups and then I have a class dojo for each period. It's free. Um, if you don't know how to use it, it's very, very user friendly. So all you do, so I'm in my first period and then I'm gonna go down here to toolkit. I'm gonna go to group maker. I only want three in a group and then it automatically randomizes them. Now, this student is the one who I would always say, if a kid is absent, then he gets to pick what, well, he gets to go where the absent kid is. So if Christina's absent, Colton's gonna pop into group four. If no one's absent, which is not very common, uh, he gets to pick what group he joins. So that's kind of like a bonus, but usually kids, there's an absent kid. So that's how I do it. And that's posted on my smart board. Now, do they believe that it's random? I think they do because eventually I start letting them come in and do it. If they get into the classroom before the bell rings, they'll say, oh, can I make the groups? And of course, I just let them hit the thing. So I really think that they, they believe it. One more thing I will tell you, though, when you go down to Toolkit and Group Maker, if you do have students that just absolutely cannot work together, you can select them. So let's say Alan and Beatrice are not allowed to be in the same group for whatever reason, you can hit done. They will not see that, but when you hit three, they will never be put together. So Beatrice um, and Alan will never be put in the same group if you have that setting selected. So again, this is Class Dojo, totally free. Um, and then second period would come up and I would do the same thing. Toolkit, Group Maker, three, I don't know what that was. Um, and then there's my groups for the second period. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Um, I am going to be pinning this and hopefully just every time we get a new member that's really curious and wanting to get started, I'm gonna say, hey, check out this frequently asked question video. And um, again, I hope it's helpful. Please let me know what else we can do to uh, continue our journey. We're rolling into August and I know we'll all be getting back to the classrooms here pretty soon. I don't wish that and, you know, to go any, any quicker than it already is, but I know a lot of us are anxious to kind of try all this stuff out with real kids instead of, you know, this um, hypothetical abstract thing that we've been doing all summer. So have a great day. Have a great upcoming weekend. I hope you're staying cool and dry depending on